This morning, as we begin a new sermon series, can you raise your hand if you are busy? Okay, that's exactly what I thought. Many of you are busy, but some of you aren't. Okay, I can work with that. My hope is that with this sermon series, Busy, Reconnecting with an Unhurried God, those of you who have full schedules and many responsibilities can be inspired to find a way to carve out room for God. And for those of you who are not busy right now, that you might find ways to reconnect with God with the room you already have. And I think that some of you here already feel deeply connected to God. You don't need to reconnect because you already are. If you're in that type of situation, will you contact me? Because I would love to hear your story and what you're doing to connect with God. And then maybe we can find a way to share it with the congregation because your experience can probably inspire the rest of us. I invite you right now into a time of prayer. Holy God, thank you for this morning and the opportunity to gather once again in your presence and in the presence of each other. Please bless the words that I speak and the words that are heard so that we may honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a confession as we begin this sermon series. My parents are productive people. Their parents were productive people, and I strive very hard to be productive. So I need this sermon series very much for my own life. As I am preaching it to you every week, I am working on these details so that I can reconnect with God too and not be quite so busy in my own life. So that is my confession to you all. One of the things I heard in the past two weeks as news was coming out about the special session was, I am so weary. I am weary with all that is happening. And I thought about that word because that's how I feel too. The special session talking and making decisions about human sexuality has been a debate in the United Methodist Church for almost 50 years. It's wearisome. And not just that, but when I watch the news about other topics, when I hear about families who are grieving, when I hear about challenges that you all, not you all, but some of you are going through, it causes me weariness. I understand that heaviness that some of you might feel right now. And I was excited to see in the scriptures Jesus speak directly to those of us who feel weary. Earlier in this chapter, Jesus is speaking to crowds. They've heard that John is in prison. John the Baptist is in prison. And Jesus is telling the crowds about cities that he has performed miracles in, and he's so disappointed in them. Because even though they have witnessed the goodness of God through Jesus, they refused to repent and change their ways. Jesus is so frustrated, but he turns to God in prayer and gratefulness. And this is what Jesus prays right before the scripture passage you just heard. Jesus said in verse 25, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. I imagine him looking up at this point. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Now, if we were part of an ancient agricultural community, we would understand that when Jesus says yoke, he is referring to this type of yoke that saddled between two oxen. This was a teaching tool used to train animals. You would hook an experienced ox with one who didn't know what it was doing, and together they'd walk side by side, and the one would learn where to go and what to do in order to serve the farmer. I don't know about you, I've never seen a yoke in action. Maybe one said... Williamsburg or something like that, but I haven't seen it in my daily life. I was trying to think, what is a contemporary metaphor that would resonate with us the same way when Jesus, is said, when Jesus said, take my yoke upon me, learn from me? It reminded me of the Girl Scouts. For example, when we went hiking when I was little, we'd line up in a line and we'd march between the cabin and the lake or the pool or wherever we were going, and we would chant, trying to march in step with each other to help the distance seem shorter. Left, 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 right, left. And we would sing some type of song, and before we knew it, we'd be at our destination. Follow me. Find the tempo. Step with me. I thought of this again yesterday at the parade in Morristown when I saw all those marching bands marching in step with each other. How many of you have been part of marching bands? I have. At the beginning, for me, it was terrifying because if you get out of step, someone's going to step on you. You have to Pay attention to the people beside you and in front of you. How are they moving their feet and their ankles and their knees? What is the tempo? What is the rhythm that we are called to work together and move forward with? After some weeks of training and then some years of experience, it's easy and it is second nature. But when you're first starting, it can be challenging. There's a lot of intentionality to marching in step with other people, to learning how to move together. When I read this text, come to me, all those who are weary. Take my yoke. It is easy and the burden is light. I imagine it's like Jesus saying, stand next to me. I'll help you through this. Life does not have to be this hard. We can move together. We can move at the same tempo. Catch on. You'll get it. Just pay attention to me. Many times when I preach, I either try to comfort those in need of comfort or challenge those who need challenge. But today is simply an invitation as we begin this sermon series. An invitation to those of you who feel weary or who feel disconnected from God. An invitation like Jesus said, come, come, learn from Jesus. Are you interested in paying more attention to how you can walk in step? Because if you are, there can be rest for your souls. Today, instead of a time of reflection, we're not going to have YK play, and I'm not going to play a metronome that ticks, tick, tick, tick. Instead, I want to encourage you simply to sit in silence. Are you interested in Jesus' invitation to come and follow? Are you interested in finding the right tempo that helps you walk with God? That's what I have for you today. And in the upcoming weeks, we'll talk about strategies that are offered in the scriptures about how we can walk in step with God. But for today, are you open to the invitation? So as you sit in silence for a couple moments, I encourage you to notice your breath that God has given you the parts of your body that don't hurt. 
perhaps like Jesus, you can begin with gratitude. What are you grateful for? And are you open to what God might have in store with you this Lenten season? Let us catch our breath.